Now, as I promised, we'll talk now more about David Bowie and his influence. Let's bring in Jack Stephen. He is director of Fortune Music. It's, and it's actually Fortress Music. Fortress, Fortress Music. Yes. Do beg I your know, pardon, Jack. Mind. Fortress Music and worked as a music, in the music industry uh, as an executive in the Bowie era. And also uh, Bowie's fashion sense we're going to talk about as well. It's influenced uh, the era. And Lizzie Zeta, fashion stylist, Hi. is with. Welcome to you both. Apologies again, no Jack. Problem. I mean, but perhaps first sum up how, how you felt this morning when you when you heard this I, I was just saying earlier that I actually felt that part of me had died I mean I have to say that that's how much an influence he is I think to me and to thousands and millions of people around the world and and strangely I I'm surprised you know I you know I sort of lived through John Lennon's death uh, you know Elvis's death and sadly this one's affected me more than any other I mean it's a very strange thing because I think with him he was probably the first complete artist where he was involved in every single area of his career, whether it's photography, fashion, whether it was film, whether it was poetry, whether it was, uh, you know, uh, uh, live work where he was very theatrical. You know, I mean, his, his vocal influence, a lot of people don't know this, came from Anthony Newdy, who, of course, was a musical, uh, you know, musical artist. So, so you know, I, I find it very, very sad today. People today talk about how he reinvented himself, how, how he, he went with the times, but he, he led the times in so many aspects through the 70s, 80s, 90s. He wasn't, he, he wasn't frightened of change. Mm. And so to him, every album was a different persona. And, and so he loved doing that. You know, so, you know, you know, one point you had Ziggy Stardust, next point you had Ed and Sane. You know, and he wasn't frightened of, uh, of uh, plagiarism either. I mean, you know, he, you know, he, he used, you know, for example, the Hunky Dory photograph on the album was, was actually based on Marlene Dietrich. And, and so he wasn't frightened where he did, you know, where he used his influence from. I mean, he was, he was hugely influential with me because I, I, I was A&R at RCA when he was sort of to the tail end of that. And I signed a band there called Eurythmics, which I was having <laughs> terrible problems with. I mean, really, yeah, well, nobody liked them at the label. I mean, promotion didn't like them, press didn't like them. I mean, nobody did. My, my boss didn't really like them. He kept telling me that they were weird. And there was an artist liaison guy there called Tony McGrogan who sort of came up to my office, grabbed me, and said, look, Bowie wants to meet up with you. Bring the tapes. So I brought, I always remember this, I brought The Walk and Love is a Stranger. And I sat with them and I played them to him. And he thought they were absolutely wow. fantastic. And then, uh, you know, and then he's, you know, I mean, his words to me were very much, if you believe in it, fight for it because I have, I mean, that's what he said to me. And so I did, and it became hugely successful. And when the album went top five, I got a telegram from him saying, thank God there's finally an A&R man with ears at RCA. Shame I've gone to EMI. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Um, we'll talk about him as a man, because actually okay. showing that he was funny. He was very you know. funny, yeah. Um, <laughs> Lizzie, the influence on, on your side of, of, of your profession, I mean, in, incredible what Enormous. he did and, and, and how his look evolved and not just the fashion, the makeup, the hair and, and the influence that, well, I, I guess it was all down to him, was it? Or did he have a team of designers? No, he didn't. I mean, no doubt he, he took ideas from various people, as, as Jack has said. But what I love about him is that he was such a true creative. He was a real innovator and he didn't give a damn. He was a true original mm -hmm. and he changed all the time his different looks throughout the ages. Just when you think, oh, well, we've got a grip on that, he'd completely change again and do something totally different. He would completely pare it down, cut it back, make it black and white. So, um, yeah, he was an amazing guy. And, and for so, so long through the career, um, gender neutral. Yes, he was. Initially, he was gender neutral. He was one of the first men, aside from Mick Jagger, to wear a dress. Mm -hmm. That was early on. That caused complete controversy at the time. Now we're just like, oh, well, guys in a dress is not, you know. But at the time, it was very groundbreaking. It was very, very brave of him to do so. Then he went on to his androgynous stage and mm -hmm. Ziggy Stardust and all the stuff that we know so well. And after that, he, he decided that he was going to pare things down and go for, you know, very sli simple looks, black trousers, white shirt, very, very simple, all the time changing. Just when you think that you had him, he'd move in a completely different direction. Um, Jack, do you think he was a happy man? You, said, you clearly shown us that he was a funny man. Or when could I, be when funny. I, when I'm, the times that I met him, yes. Um, uh, you know, I mean, you know, what was there not to be happy? 
I mean, the you know, pressure. He, well, the pressure maybe, but I mean, he was he he was able to express himself in a way that most artists can't. Uh, one of the most beautiful wives in the world. I mean, you know, it's just sort of, you know, I mean, what do you, you know... I, what's not to like? What's not to like? And also, you know, I, I, he had such a grasp on technology, uh, even when he got ill, you know, I mean, I, I heard that he had, was having heart trouble and stuff. Mm. But then he, you know, he sort of digitally released an album that went to number one in the UK mm. charts. I mean, you know, so, so I, I, I think... I think if I was Bowie and I look back at my career, I'd be pretty... You know, happy about what I've achieved. Uh, it wasn't easy for absolutely. him. I have to tell you. I mean, he fought every single step of the way. I mean, I know the American side was really hard because he was he was furious that uh, none of his records really broke big in America, and 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 so he, he really got sort of annoyed and and actually just packed up, went to America, and then did the Diamond Dogs tour where he booked three theatres. I mean, I think one in Philadelphia, Radio City, and I think the other one was the. I think it was the Universal, I can't remember, it was the Universal thing. And he booked them himself, filmed it, and he said, right, I'm breaking America alone. I don't care about you, RCA, and, and I mean, interestingly, even if um, in, in your youth or even now uh, anyone wasn't into Bowie, today will show you that the people that you were into or are into would have been terribly influenced by what he did. I mean, he had such an impact on, on so many layers of the music industry. Yeah, no, absolutely. But, but also, you see, he was a great, you know, he was a great spotter of talent. I mean, you know, he, he was the first person to, you know, from the UK as a European artist who sort of got into the whole Velvet Underground scene. Uh, you know, I mean, he loved all of that. Iggy Pop and the Stooges. You know, he's the first person to experiment with sort of dark um, uh, computer sound in terms of his, you know, albums like uh, Low and Lodger, which he did in Berlin with Tony Visconti and Brian Eno. Uh, you know, Let's Dance, I mean, that yeah. was a complete surprise, you know, working with Nile Rodgers. I mean, it was almost a disco record. I mean, it's phenomenal. Uh, you know, even Tin Man, which, you know, wasn't very popular, but I always kind of liked it because it was like him going, you know, I like, you know, white trash rock and I'm going to play it and, you know, that's it. I was going to swear then. <laughs> <laughs> Behave. But he was, uh, he was also great at, at, at spotting fashion talent. Mm. He, he picked up on a young designer called um, Yamamoto, who then went on to design those really outlandish um, costumes for stage, very theatrical, very strong. And he also later picked up on um, Alexandra McQueen, who designed him a frock coat. This was before Alexandra McQueen was really right. huge. And he designed this frock coat for him, complete with cigarette burns everywhere, that was incredibly iconic. So I think from all, he was a highly intelligent, erudite man and he was uh, had he was a visionary who could pick up all these influences before they started hitting the mainstream and he was always true to himself and, and all of those things live on in in the um, exhibition that yes, there is of course. Suppose, which is now touring the world and has been hugely successful uh, do you have a favorite look a favorite uh, time of David Bowie oh that's so hard I mean I really quite fancied him when he was doing the soul boy look <laughs> and it was all suits and slick back dark hair that was he looked gorgeous then but it's got to be Ziggy Stardust yeah. that's the most iconic with a really outlandish makeup and you know every time a woman applies a glittery eyeshadow <laughs> every time the influence is right there that's David Bowie yeah and uh, this is really hard maybe you can't answer it but do you have a favorite song Oh, yeah. it's, it's impossible. The, I was, we were talking earlier. The one, the one song that I was probably the most impressed with, which was really obscure, was that you went live on the Bing Crosby show in America yes. and did Little Drummer Boy. Yes. And to this day, I mean, the courage of the man to do that, because Bing Crosby is regarded as one of the most purest singers yeah. in the world. And I think, I think just, just for the fact that he had the courage to do that, I think that's one of my favourite tunes of his. D does, d will he? be looked back on as the proper rock and roll star yeah. I mean did he live the yeah. rock and roll lifestyle yeah, he did in his early days absolutely his early days. you know but I mean you know it, but he, 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 he is the he's the man that um, uh, developed modern day music the approach to modern day music where you have to really understand every facet of media I mean he was very much like that and, uh, you know, but he was a very funny man, he used to make me laugh. <laughs> um, and we're all of a certain age, um, but you believe that things that he pioneered live on today, that, that actually do. his influence is still there. They definitely do. In the cab coming down, I was thinking, OK, influences of David Blowett, Barry, flat caps, v-neck uh, uh, um, play suits, uh, bright socks, um, very outlandish prints, 
suits for men. You see them on the high street all the time in pastel colours. He was a pioneer of all of this at a time when they were outrageous, mm -hmm. when men's fashion was like, well, you might as well look at paint drying. It was so boring. So, yeah, he was a, he was a one-off. And very contemplative as well. He, he, he went off to Berlin for quite a while um, to sort of go inward, to read poetry. He got involved with the art scene there and he completely changed his look. And he went from very flamboyant to really low key. Just finally then, Jack Blackstar. I mean, right. do you see it how people are seeing it today, that this, this is his goodbye, that I this think, was I all pre-planned? I, I, I think it is his goodbye. But I, I don't think he'll ever be forgotten. Um, lovely to talk to you both, uh, Jack Stephen and Lizzie Zita. Thank you both. Okay, thank, thank you, you. too.